and I know they are just enjoying it. Some are probably sleeping in, probably slept in from the last day of school till now. It's Saturday. <laughs> Saturday doesn't count. And, and Paul Herring is here today, and we might, we might, there's a possibility, we might ask him about some special event going on this weekend. No, he, it already happened. It's, it's over, it's all, baby. Not even today. I missed the parade. You missed everything. <sighs> I did Paul, I'm so sorry. That's all right. I will beat you I later. I missed your son uh, talking because of a board meeting Monday night. Did you? But I thought we had a parade on Saturday. I'm, I'm, Paul, it's, I'm it is online, so you didn't I miss it. To, you missed well, the live I gotta, version I of it. i got to watch him. Yeah, you can see it He's a great online. kid. I'd mm -hmm. love to see that. Hi, everybody. Good morning again. Sorry to dabble in our language here. You're on TV. We're on TV now. Hi, audience. How are you? Glad to see you. And good evening wherever you are. And good morning to our radio audience. Live number 23957. Three three two three nine five seven three three. Thank you, regular listeners, for tuning in. We've got a great program. I really believe you're going to learn some stuff, particularly about a special organization, a special grant that organization got, and some special programs that organization is going to provide for probably up to five thousand Flint area youth. Am I right, Jesse Carpenter? You're correct. You're exactly <laughs> correct. <laughs> Jesse Carpenter is a name most of us know and that are get out and around a little bit. He's a police officer with the Flint uh, City Police Department, of course, highly respected, greatly admired by most folks, and of course, as well, uh, the Boys and Girls Club that he operates over on the uh, west side of the city of Flint and is now called, was the Boys and Girls Club, has now been converted to Flint PAL, Police Ath Activities League. But you have a connection with Boys and Girls Club. Yes, actually, uh, we opened up the building as PAL, and we brought the Boys and Girls Club in as a, a community partner. But the building is operated uh, and directed under my supervision as the executive director of the Flint Police Activities League. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, you service a great number of kids. Give us round numbers so folks have a fig uh, an idea of all that you do there and the hours of the program. Sir. And we didn't say where it was. Yes, it's located at 2201 Forest Hill Avenue. Haskell Youth Center. Uh, Sunday, I mean Monday the 16th, we kicked off our summer program, which is 8:30 to 4:30 p.m. And we uh, serve three meals a day: uh, breakfast, lunch, and afternoon snack. Totally free to the kids. It's a small application process. Roughly about 10 minutes of paperwork, and your kids have fun for the rest oh, of the summer. Man. And it's secure. It's safe. They have fun galore. And uh, there's some educational stuff happens. That all, it's all not all fun because I know Jesse how you are. And I know you focus on academics as well. Oh, definitely. We have to take care of business. <coughs> uh, we uh, focus on uh, our, our after-school program, which definitely has a homework hour involved with it, mentoring, tutoring. Uh, in our sports program, you must provide a, a, a report card first in order to join. Mm -hmm. And then we, you don't have to be a scholar at that time, but we'll see where you're at, and then we'll get you at, on that honor roll. Yeah, I, I met your staff there, Jesse. They're very committed to kids and very committed to rules and regulations, but very committed to having kids have a good time under a very supervised, uh, warm and loving environment. So you have a great set of staff people. I don't know if I met them all, but I sure did meet most of them on the day we had a board meeting there. So very impressive organization and there have been some great things that have occurred inside the building in terms of improving what, what you have. And then I know you do a lot of outside improvements as well. And you want to talk about that a little bit of what's available for kids if they should want to join the PAL? Well, we have a various amount of activities that we do outside as well. Uh, in the past four years, due to our commitment and our dedication with Keep Genesee County Beautiful, we've been awarded uh, two new playgrounds uh, that will occupy kids from ages 7 through 14. Our latest extension was a fitness playground where there's a chin-up bar, things of that nature. And uh, we have some special things with a grant that we just had to improve some of the park uh, anemones as well. Yeah, yeah, let, let's explore that grant a little bit. Uh, Ruth Mott has been kind to you, deservedly so, so why don't you, if you're able to talk a little bit about that. Oh, definitely. We, uh, we've been blessed to be able to receive uh, a, hundred, a, a grant for 171000 with the fiduciary and partnership of the Krim Fitness Foundation, and it's to provide sports uh, throughout the, the, the city's youth for tackle football, baseball, t-ball, soccer, cheerleading. What's that new sport coming in? Lacrosse. 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 We're okay. going to introduce that to our inner city kids and get them involved into it in a fundamental standings, hoping that 
in the future as we raise the, the grade level, we'll be able to compete with the other with other organizations throughout Genesee County. Okay. No doubt about that. Just no doubt about that. Yeah, for for the Mott, Ruth Mott to give you that much money, they clearly have confidence in you and with your partnership strength as well. So it's going to be a great asset to just all of Genesee County, particularly Flint kids, particularly Flint kids. And I know, Jesse, you know we provide a, a, out of our school, after school bus, we love what you do over there. We have a drop-off spot for our kids to leave our school at the after school hours and go to you if they don't want to stay at our school, to go home first, so that's fine. We support all that you're doing there totally and completely. We're honored and pleased to be a working partner with you, sir. Likewise, okay. uh, thank you. you. You've witnessed uh, everything we've done from the start. You were there to support us from the beginning, and our organization is very, very gracious and blessed to have a partner in the community such as you and your organization. Well, international, uh, well, we're just mutually kissing each other here. But anyway, <laughs> we, we, we just feel real good about where our kids go after school when they're with you. There's just no question about it. Thank you. Well, hey, Jess, uh, you've got a couple of young folks with you here. Or let's talk a little bit about uh, the, your family. And Mrs. Carpenter's with us here, but she's shying away from the camera. But I'm going to wave at you anyway, Ms. Carpenter. How are you today? You look lovely, of course. Uh, Brandon. Grab that mic and talk about Brandon and your involvement with when uh, uh, the Police Athletic League first began. Can you go back and talk a little bit about that? Is that too hard? <laughs> yeah, it's too hard. Okay, all right. Well, I, tell us where you go to school. We'll take it from there and then tell us your activities at school. And I am particularly uh, excited in, in one way, of course, that you are doing so well academically. So expound on your the organization you belong to and what your career objective is going to be. And we are so pleased to hear that. So tell us all about Brandon. Um, I attend Carmen Azar High School in 16 um, in the National Honor Society, an after school program for kids who can maintain a 4.0. And I like to play basketball. Now, folks, there's a 4.0 that must be on a five point system, is that right? Okay, yeah, because see, our school goes up to 4.0, so that would, to be with us, he'd have to have never get a B. <laughs> well, actually, it's a 3.599 to 4.0. Oh, to 4.0. Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right, now I understand. All right, because some schools do have a 5.0. Exactly. Yeah, right. Thanks, Brandon. Keep talking. Mm. And let's talk about that career objective. That's the one that is, uh, I'm so pleased well, to hear. When I get to college, I'm going to study to be a doctor. Most likely a pediatrician, but if I can do anything better, I'll do that. Okay. Well, there, you know, to serve as children in the medical profession, outstanding, just outstanding. Jesse, we've had a couple of our kids I've had on the radio. I didn't know what their objective was before they got here, and they also shared that same thing. So I think our kids are starting to think big and think, think great, great outcomes. And I, of course, commend you and Mrs. Carpenter for kind of guiding him in that way a little bit. He may have chosen that, but you're... I know you, you seek excellence in everything that you do, including academics. So he's doing quite well, and if he becomes a pediatrician, uh, that would be absolutely wonderful. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Sport-wise, where are you there, buddy? Um, I play basketball, and I'm starting to play soccer right now. Oh, okay. And other than that. Those are the only two sports I play. Okay. Well, there's a lot of running there, that's for sure. What's your position? Guard? Yes. In, in, in basketball, of course. Yes, okay. All right, very good. What are you doing this summer? Are you going to hang out with Pops? Um, right now, I work for Haskell Community Center. Part of Youth Quest or Teen Quest? Yes. Okay, oh, very good. That's excellent. Yeah, we'll be hiring a few kids, too, just at our school to do a number of uh, light control issues in our neighborhood. So we were able to uh, get some kids hired there. Some, some of the services that we do, we could not do without that program. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've had, we were a center this year for... Um, one of the locations in which they had the six-week program, or eight-week, or six or eight, and we had kids coming from everywhere in the world, it seems. So we certainly, and a bunch of our kids got got jobs this year. Uh, if anybody's listening, they got a job through uh, Teen Quest. Why don't you come on and call in? And I'm thinking of particularly one young man that might be working at Mott College. So if he'd like to call in, we'd love to hear you chat. Well, anyway, uh, Brandon, that's great. You're going to be a in the fall a junior or a sophomore? Junior. Junior. Okay. All right. Getting old, aren't you? <laughs> oh, mercy, I tell you, I can't even remember that far back. <laughs> okay, Brandon, very good, but let's pass the mic to one of these other brothers of yours. Who's going to take it? Who's going to take it?
Cameron, is that you? Come on, slide in. You can still... What? I tell you what, uh, let's have um, Jesse Jr. take his spot so we can put both of you on the camera. And Cameron, tell us about the same thing that we asked uh, uh, Brandon about uh, your career objectives and favorite subjects and stuff like that. There's parents and other kids listening that might want to hear. So go ahead, buddy. Um, my favorite subject is... And you're in what grade? Oh, eighth. Eighth grade, Well, okay. going to the ninth now, I'm about All to be right. freshman. My favorite subject is Spanish. Really? Yeah. All right. We teach Spanish, in case he'd like to transfer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. And... Uh, oh yeah, when I go off to college, I want to go into the medical field and be a surgeon. As well, oh my. But you know what, well, he said one thing here that just got me just excited because he said, when I go to college. He didn't say if, Jesse and Miss Carpenter. He said when. Not so an I, option. You, you, not an option, Mom says, and I know she does the cooking, therefore, not an option. That's great. Okay, keep talking. Why did you select that? Why a surgeon? Why do you think? Because, like, I watch a lot of TV, and I, like, see people getting surgery done. Okay. And, like, I just like to help people. <clears throat> that's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah, that's just wonderful. Uh, yeah, when you see TV, sometimes it's not quite that way in the real room. But uh, again, the fact that you want to help people is great. And of course, you needed just a years and years of college to help you become knowledgeable so you know where to perform exactly that surgery, where and how, and tie things together and get them out and get them back on their feet. So again, great, great uh, occupation that you're seeking of doing, both in the medical field. Jesse Jr., grab that mic. Let's hear what you're thinking about, buddy. Where do you go to school? Middle, school. middle. Okay. All right. And uh, favorite subjects might be what? Uh, my favorite subject is math. All right. And you're thinking? I know you're only in sixth grade going in, right? Okay. And you're thinking about what <coughs> as a career? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, when I get to college, I wanna. I wanna be a surgeon. Another one. Okay. All right. You can both work in the same hospital. We'll call. We're changing the hospital names to Carper Car Carpenter Community Hospital. <laughs> Jesse, you wouldn't turn that down a bit. Oh, this Not is at great, all. great things Not for at kids. All. Favorite sport? Basketball. Another hooper. Okay. All right. Another sport as well. You enjoy? Uh, football. Football. Okay. If it was soccer. What was your other sport? Um, I'm oh. debating right now over football and soccer. Okay. You think you might play ball in the fall? Middle school football? They have it. High, high school. school. High school. High school. You're going there tonight. Excuse me. I forgot. So, yeah. Uh, so you'll probably have to start working out here in the middle of July, conditioning, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, are you guys going to be with Dad as much as possible over at uh, Haskell? Yes. That'd be great if you could. Are you? No, you're too young to be on Teen Quest, right? He's upset that he's too okay. young, too. Right. He wanted well, to work bad this summer. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, you ever hear that word volunteer? <laughs> okay. Pop in and help Dad. He'd he does that, and, and that's not an option. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Jess, uh, let's talk. Again, young men, you did really, really good, all three of you. Um, any other things you'd like to talk about related to um, Police Athletic League and uh, program growth? And maybe we could... Um, if you have specific plans for the grant, uh, if you want to remark about that, anything that you're comfortable in saying, sir. Yes, we have uh, a numerous amount of, of dates that are, that are coming up, a, a baseball clinic reg registration that we're uh, affiliated with the <coughs> City uh, Baseball, conducted by Sam Stewart. You want to uh, talk about those dates now, if you know them, sir? Well, those, those dates are currently being put on our website at flintpal.org. Okay. And they can download forms and everything starting Monday. And our conditioning and registration for football will start on Monday. I mean, the registration will start online on Monday as well, and conditioning will start in the the, th the last week of July. Okay, and folks, if you have questions for Jesse now, this is the time, 239-5733. Call him. Ask him anything about this vast and wonderful program. So good for kids. Just can't <coughs> be any better. It's just great. 239 239-57. 3 3. Call Jesse Carpenter right here, right now, Officer Jesse Carpenter. But Jesse, let's talk about Flint. They're able to utilize you there. Uh, now, you do not perform uh, officer duties. You're, you're a full time employee at, at the Haskell. Or do you do uh, patrol I, I, work? As I dibble well? and dabble in the, in the patrol area as well. Uh, we have a program going on right now. It's called Inside Out. 
and with some of the uh, the staff that the, the chief uh, James Tolbert uh, has directed that are in a position where they're not seen by the public we go out once a week and help out patrol and do do whatever that it takes okay. to, to cut the crime rate down yeah, of course. and it, it, it's working it's working uh, as a team we see the difference and we we know the plight uh, mostly everybody that's on our team has a 12 years or more of experience mm -hmm. oh my. and and we know the battle that's ahead and we're as a team we're not ashamed we're not mm -hmm. upset about going out and doing that work mm -hmm. it has to be done it has to be done as a team and how uh, how is the citizen participation lately All right, do we have some folks that are using that word snitching because that's going to help you folks uh, cut down the crime do you see much more participation in helping officers fight crime Oh, definitely, and, and as, as we move into that segue of, of people talking up and everything, we have a huge event next Saturday down at the Flat Lot. It's a free three-on-three -three basketball contest to all the kids and it's all the local law enforcement, the Sheriff Department, uh, Chief Ray Hall from, uh, mm -hmm. from U of M Flint is, is very inspired and excited about it. Uh, the state police officers, our team, that are our inside-out team will be down there as well, shooting free throws, playing two ball with kids, monitoring courts, just building relationships with the kids okay. so that they know we're there in the community for them. And the flat lot, explain to where that is just so folks know that sometimes that term isn't familiar. Go ahead. That's right across from the, the Secretary of State building, uh, coming to the east. Going back south, it's right across from the U of M mm -hmm. student uh, pavilion. And it's next to the tallest building in Flint. Exactly. <laughs> the Mott Foundation building. Exactly. Okay. And that will begin when? There might be some grandparents listening as well, so they might run, run something down. That's next Saturday the 28th? That's next Saturday the 28th. Registrations you can pick up right now at Haskell Youth Center. Okay. Uh, give, give us a call at 766-7144. On Monday, if you have any problems, we'll be out in the community trying to uh, get kids registered as well. Okay. Uh, grab, a, grab a pen or pencil, folks, if you're listening. Jesse's going to give that number in about uh, 30 more seconds. So go ahead quickly, get a pen and pencil. If you want a grandson, son, daughter, who met. This is for girls too, of course. Girls and Absolutely. boys, uh, okay. four person team, three on the court at a time. And like I said, it's totally free to the kids. And if they don't have a team, they could mesh with somebody down there. Is that Yes, possible? we will have registration uh, beginning at 8 a.m. on Saturday. Uh, first games will start at nine. And if you don't have a team, we'll partner you with some kids down there. We want as many kids down there, and all they have to do is take a pledge to speak up. Yeah, it's a fun day, folks. So if you'd like to get your kids involved, please, please call this number, Jesse. 810-766-7144. That's the Haskell Youth Center. And if you, I'll give you our number here in a moment. If you want to talk to Jesse directly, we've got about 11, 10 or 11 or more minutes. So we'll give you our number so that we don't confuse you with the one Jesse just gave you. It is... Two three nine five seven three three. Talk to him right here, right now, or ask the the carpenter kids uh, what they're doing for the rest of the summer, and they'll tell you. So come on and call two three nine five seven three three. And during this lull in activity, Jesse, you're going to sing the national anthem for us, right? <laughs> Only if I can do it in mind. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Good, Jesse. <laughs> right. Folks, International Academy of Flint, this is our program, and we are so pleased you can listen to us today, and I hope uh, a couple more weeks during the summer. Uh, we are starting summer school, ladies and gentlemen, on the 23rd. If we've got IAF kids out there now that I've been asked to return to summer school either mandatorily or highly recommended, uh, then we want you to begin uh, tomorrow morning, uh, excuse me, uh, Monday morning the 23rd, 8 o'clock a.m., and they have a five-week program, 8 to 12, every single day. Then at 12 noon, we have our Youth Quest program, goes from noon until 4.30 in the afternoon, and that's for a whole bunch of other kids or the same kids, because if you can coordinate with summer school, you can then be a part of our uh, Youth Quest program. And we've got hundreds of kids, Jess, involved in that program as well. I don't want to steal them from you, but we do have a real strong Youth Quest program, grades K through 8. And then, folks, this is a coming event. This is a coming event. This is a coming event. Write down Parent Expo. Expo is spelled O-P-X-E backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the Parent Expo on Thursday, August 7th. Four to, uh, three to six in the afternoon at International Academy of Flint. 
we'd like you to come on and take a look at our school. We'll have bounce houses galore and a lot of other special activities. A variety of organizations and agencies will be there to talk about and uh, offer opportunities and resources for parents starting the school year. And uh, DHS, just a host of other folks will be there. We'll probably have about 40 or so uh, organizations represented. And Jess, if you'd like to, you can have a table there during that period of time or uh, to talk about Police Athletic League, if that would interest you as well. Maybe Certainly. some of your staff, we'd love to have you there. Certainly. Absolutely love to have you there. That somebody else could be at the table. Look who I'm pointing at. Is exactly, that volunteer you told okay, me about. That's right. <laughs> Not All an right. option. Cameron, can we do that, buddy? Yeah. Okay, Mom, it's okay? Mom's nodding. I got approval. When I got vast <laughs> approval here. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay, folks, August 7th, the date. It's a Thursday, four to, or 3 to 6 p.m., if you don't mind. And uh, we were, uh, again, we starting summer school. If I'm you know, giving tours all the time throughout the summer, call us, call us, 605,000, 605,000. Paul, we're going to put you on in a minute about talking a little bit about uh, that event that happened. I'll to talk about the snitching thing, oh, man. Okay. I just, I just okay. found a quote. Hang on, let, let me finish my thought here. Do I don't it. get very many of them. So when I get them, I got to about Give both of them, okay. give both of them. Well, whatever I was talking about, don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we're in, uh, love to give you a tour, folks. This is a tour time for the most part. We've got several set up even for next week. Uh, folks want to take a look at our building. Some have already enrolled and just want to say, Mr. Art, show us what that place is like. We heard so much about it. Please come on call. If you want to call during the day over there or during the night, I give tours day, evening, and weekend. 600, 5,000, easiest number in the world to call. We would love to meet you, greet you, bring your kids, show you all we do inside and outside. We're having a busy summer as well. A lot of volunteer work going on in our neighborhood as well. And we'll be giving away food again a couple of times this summer also. Well, Paul Herring, can I force you, joke, joke, into <laughs> talking a little bit, uh, particularly mention your success with um, <coughs> Juneteenth as well. And then I need to close off, if you don't mind it. So take maybe three, four oh, minutes. Oh, rush me. That's yeah, what you're going to okay. do, huh? And I get on the microphone, and now hey, i got to hurry up. Paul. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to tell you all about the Juneteenth celebration. We had a great time down in Riverbank Park. You guys, if you weren't there, you missed it. We celebrated our 24th annual uh, Juneteenth celebration, and now we're gearing up for 25 years. Our 25th year will be the 150th anniversary of the celebration nationwide. Okay. And um, Which don't originated. tell anybody. Based but, upon the Texas situation. Right? Exactly. Okay. And don't tell anybody. This is a secret, okay? So okay. I'm just going to tell you, all right? We are hopeful that Barack Obama will make it a national holiday in time for the 150th anniversary. Don't tell anybody, all right? It's a secret. <laughs> you know, he told me that in confidence, and I wasn't supposed to, you know, share it, but I'm just so excited. Now, you're three <laughs> listeners. You're three listeners. All three there. of them, right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, don't tell nobody. <laughs> but I put a point on that, okay? Well, but, um, you know, what was interesting. I heard you guys talking about the snitching. Yeah, please. And I just, uh, I, I just actually rolled over a quote from Albert Einstein. And it says that the world is a dangerous place to live in. Not because of the bad people in it, but because of the people that don't do anything about the bad people. You know, and that just supports that. And no snitching is, is really a stupid mm -hmm. kind of thing going on. you got to take care of our community. And if you see bad stuff going on, it's really your mm -hmm. obligation as a citizen to make sure you tell somebody about it so that it doesn't continue happening and happening. Mm -hmm. I used to be one of the guys that would um, buy merchandise off the street, you know, a guy would walk up to you and have a, a hammer and would want two dollars for it. And I'd throw him two dollars and take the hammer. But I discovered that once I did that, that somebody would steal something from me. And it's just a bad juju. So now I don't buy stuff off the street anymore because I just felt that I was adding to the problem. If this guy knows he can sell me a hammer for two dollars, he might break into your house to get that hammer to come and get the two dollars from me. So we got to think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, it may be a deal, but you're adding to the problem. And I'm telling. You on the if fire. I see some yep. stuff, I'm telling. I'm going to tell everybody I know I'm telling. And we, we urge everyone in the community to do the same. And, and Jesse, it works. We, yeah. have a, we have a nice kind of little informal system in our school neighborhood. And uh, it, we've, we've utilized it a couple of times and extremely effective. 
uh, with what occurred. I won't talk about that or the incident, but it's uh, it works. It really, really works. And it takes the people off the street that need to be off the street until they are until they have been uh, reconvinced that that's the wrong thing to do or whatever. Agreed. But, folks, it works. It just simply works. Now, Paul, give us another couple of minutes about, uh, maybe two, two maximum, please, about Juneteenth and the highlights, please. Oh, well, uh, I tell you, our headline was fabulous. I don't even want to start with that. Uh, Dr. Jarvis was inspirational. He really um, got everybody fired up about how we are responsible for what's going on here in Flint. And if we want to see any change, it's going to be up to us and not up to our legislators. So he really put a fire under some folks' butts to get mm -hmm. them started and, and doing the right thing. I really think that as a community, like I always say, you know, we had like 67 murders the last year. Yeah. Yeah. And when I look at it the, logically, you know, it's devastating. 67 murders are is horrible. But there's 100,000 of us. And when you think about 67 compared to 100,000 of it, that's a half of a half of a half of a half of a percent of our citizenship that's acting a fool. What are the rest of us doing? We know who did that, right? We know those 67 people. Some of us know those 67 mm -hmm. people. It's really up to us to get those 67 people off the street and then Flint could be a utopia. Okay. In fact, there's, is there a unity march today, Jess, or is it next Saturday? I believe it is. I think it's today. Yeah, I think today it's today at 11. With, with, Sorry, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. way up at uh, St. Mount Carmel? Our Savior Lutheran Church on North Saginaw. Mm -hmm. I think okay. it's going on right about now, in fact. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jesse, what have I got? About a minute. i got to wind up. Paul Herring, thank you for your cogent remarks. Appreciate them very much. Anytime. You remain my friend. You're a great guy. Uh, thank my you very check is due. I oh, need my invoice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing the subject now. <laughs> Jesse Carpenter and sons and mother, nice to have you here today. Jess, any closing words of wisdom for us all? And thank you for being with us, number one, and for the great pro program that you have initiated, instituted, and will continue to do for the city of Flint. So thank you for that. Closing remarks, sir, before I hit it. Yes, I just want to touch on that snitching uh, concept that uh, the, the behind the, the person who in the streets that so-called snitches is a person that's involved in a crime that wants to put the burden on somebody else. So they give somebody else up mm -hmm. instead of taking the responsibility for their own actions. But telling and solving a crime by speaking up in your community mm -hmm. is not snitching. No. That's redu redu reducing the crime rate mm -hmm. and helping out your community and not leaving it up to everybody else and coming in. Community is communication and unity. Very community. Good. Very good. He nailed it, folks. Don't forget. Wind her up, Art. I got to go. Jess, here we go. Hey, everybody, are you walking your dog, looking at a blog, or sitting there looking at nobody and in a fog? Or are you carefully cavorting camels while conducting caloric counts of crusty cabbage, culminating in a catastrophic collision of cantaloupes in a canyon, clumsily catching coconuts classified as corrosive <laughs> conductors of cojagulated cottage cheese, creating chaos in Chicago, Chattanooga, or Cucamonga? Then look at somebody and say, Ooh. Ooh, woo, woo, woo. That is some kind of school, bye.